Hi there, my name is Chris from Digix. Today I'm going to show you a video demo of the upcoming Spectrum project, which we have just completed the pre-alpha release of. Please check the description for a link to the blog article explaining more about what Spectrum is. What you're seeing right now is not the final completed product. This is, after all, an MVP demo of the alpha release. So expect things to change a lot as the development of Spectrum progresses. When new users visit Spectrum, they'll be presented with the option of enabling persistent sessions. This will save the application state in local storage between refreshes, meaning users get a convenient way to access their accounts without having to re-upload the key stores every time they want to make a transaction. It's saved in browser state in encrypted form and just adds a bit of convenience. Obviously, this is an optional feature and for offline signing, for example, this would not be appropriate. For now, we'll continue as a guest to see what the guest login flow is like. For now, let's jump into accounts and by default, no accounts are created. It's possible to import accounts from Geth um, in the V3 compatible format or you can paste in a private key, and that will add the account to Spectrum. Alternatively, you can create a new account in Spectrum. You can name the account. You can enter a password for encrypting it. Advanced users can edit the encryption settings for less or more security and select the network that the account is associated with. By default, all accounts will be enabled on the Ethereum mainnet and use some uh, default encryption settings. Once the account's created, it will be added to the list of accounts and users can see the public key, the address of the account, as well as a, a gravatar that's unique to that address. Right now, as you can see, this account has no balance. You can click the account name to edit the account information, change the name, Clicking the export button will download an encrypted JSON file which is compatible with Geth. Let's go back to the backup restore settings now and we're going to restore a previously created backup. So this is an encrypted JSON file that I created earlier with my account settings. So we're going to enter the decryption key unlock it. When you import accounts, you can edit the settings and check the account information before you import it. And if everything looks good, you can import the session. So that's complete. We can go back to the accounts and look at the previous session that I created. So here you can see a bunch of accounts that were created earlier. Um, all of them have unique gravitars and some of them have Ethereum balances, some of them do not. Again, you can edit and associate accounts with different networks. I just refreshed the page there to show you that the persistent storage is now saved in local storage. So instead of having to re-upload that for every time you visit the app, it's already there in place. Now all your accounts are still encrypted, so there's a level of security there. Now the session itself is optionally encrypted meaning every time you refresh, you'll need to enter the password. But for this session, it's disabled, so it automatically loads up the accounts. And you can see that we have the balances that are pulled from Ethereum. Now let's look at the Networks tab. Here we can define all of the available networks. Most of them are disabled at the moment. But let's enable that for the Ethereum testnet. We're going to select the, the node, and we can change the color if you want, and enable that. So now Ropston is enabled, we go back to the accounts and we can see the balance for Ropston has been added to the other accounts. Now let's send a transaction. We're going to send three testnet ether to this other account. Right now we don't have a transaction signing UI, that's part of the next release, but we enter the password and create a transaction. The transaction is created in browser and signed using the key store in browser and is then broadcast using the connection to Ethereum. Once it's broadcast, you'll see the transaction ID, which will then take some time to mine, and once it's confirmed in a block, 
you'll see the actual confirmation information. There's also a link to the various different um, blockchain explorers for that specific network to show you the details. And you can see the account balances have updated. Now let's go over to Daplets. Um, right now the Dapp store is not implemented. It will be in future releases. For now there's a very simple rudimentary token transfer app. Here you can see all the available tokens. Eventually you'll be able to have custom tokens and by adding them you get the balances added to that particular account. Let's send some rep to another account. So we will copy the account address and click the rep to send to that address, enter the value, hit send, and it's exactly the same as the base token transfer. So again, we're creating a transaction and broadcasting it to the Ethereum network. Once that's broadcast, we'll see the transaction hash and a status. We need to wait for a minute for it to be mined. Again, once it's mined, we'll see the transaction and the account balances will update. So now we have this uh, updated configuration. Let's make a backup of this. This is the current session that I imported earlier. Uh, you can have multiple sessions and switch between them, uh, but for now we have one. Let's create a backup of this session by clicking Create JSON Backup. We can optionally encrypt it um, with a password and choose which kind of data we want to back up. And once we create that backup, we can hit confirm and we will get the backup file downloaded. You can also see here Google Cloud Services and IPFS options for backup restore. Right now this is not implemented, but in the future you'll be able to sign into your Google Drive account and back up that way, or use IPFS and scan with a QR code on your phone to synchronize your account settings on your mobile device via IPFS. So that's the core functionality of Spectrum, MVP complete, and we'll be soon releasing the source code as well as developer tools and community project management tools. There's a link if you want to try things out yourself. And in the coming months, we'll be working on this to add the DAP Store functionality and various different backup options, as well as various different improvements. Thanks for watching. Bye.